All right, boys, welcome back to another edition of the Horseman Pro Football Talk podcast. Um, welcome back to another season. We're excited to get this started. I'm Brad. This is Zach. And I'm Hefe. All right, so this is our second year. We're excited to be back. We're hoping to do things bigger and better uh, and uh, smarter. I don't know that we can get smarter. You know, we're pretty pretty sharp. We're pretty dead on it last year. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, we were. We uh, all three of us did really well in that Pick'em League we had going, which will be rolling out again this this coming season. So hopefully, we get some more people in there. Give us a little bit of competition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, so bring it on. We 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 definitely need competition. Hey, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and uh, the bell icon as a reminder, so you never miss an episode uh, and our chance at a jersey giveaway and. Uh, if you're listening to your favorite podcast platform, head on over to YouTube and help us out. We certainly appreciate the support. Today, we're going to go through, uh, the, we're going to run down the NFC North. We're going to break down all the teams and give you our opinion and some factual statistics as well. Do we have, uh, and look, uh, we, we need people to come on the show. We want, if you know about your team, we want you to come on your team when we, run through the preview for your division. Tell us why your team will or will or won't win. I, you know, I mean, if, if you're a Bucks fan, tell us why. If you're a Lions fan, come on and tell us why they won't. Or Cowboys fan, I guess that would work too. Um, but we need people to come on the show and tell us why we don't know what we're talking about. Or tell us we know what we're talking about. We like the compliments too. So we won't get you very far, but we appreciate it. All right, so which team do we want to start with today? Doesn't matter to me. I'm good with all of them. Probably the the bottom of the barrel, right? Start with the lines. Oh my gosh! All right. You think so? You yeah. don't. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. We can start there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let let me start. Um, usually, for people who are just joining us, uh, I've been a coach for a long time. I, I look at, I watch this game from a coach's vantage point doesn't mean I'm qualified to coach an NFL team by any stretch of the imagination. It's just the way I look at it. I watch coaches. I'm a coach's fan. And so I kind of handle the the coach and the team aspect thing. And I let these guys really uh, break a lot of the, the, the players and the dynamics down there. So we're going to start with the Detroit Lions. New coach, Dan Campbell. F.A., you're a big fan, aren't you? I do like Dan Campbell. I think he has the right kind of energy. I think he can be a leader of men. Um, he, you know, I don't know how he'll be as a head coach. You know, he. Well, I'm he getting seems, ready to tell you, so don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it seems like he's just, you know, just going to be an energy kind of guy. I don't know what kind of background he has. You know, he was there with Sean Payton in New Orleans, kind of studying under what he would he was doing as a head coach. So I could see him having some success. Um, and maybe in the future, I don't think with the team he has this year, um, that, that he'll be able, make, be able to make a run with them. Um, but, you know, he, he has the makings of a coach that could be good. It's just whether or not he can put it together at some point. All right, so let's break this down. Dan Campbell, uh, first and foremost, he is an energy guy. There, there's no – that guy brings a lot of fire. I'm sure he's got a magnetic personality. I'm sure the players are going to like him. Um, he's got a lot of energy. That certainly helps. Right. Um, he has a Super Bowl appearance. Uh, he played for the New York Giants under Jim Fassel uh, when they when they lost to the Baltimore Ravens. Um, I would feel better if he had appeared in a Super Bowl and won and or been under a coach like Bill Achek or Sean Payton. Uh, but but nonetheless, I mean, you can't discount that, you know, winning and, be, and being a part through the playoffs. And that, that, that I mean, if you take a guy who's a brand-new head coach who had never been through the playoffs versus a guy who at least went to Super Bowl and lost. Obviously, we're all going to take the guy that's been to the Super Bowl. There's a, there's a lot to be said there. So uh, he was with Miami Dolphins, was actually, if you remember, he was he filled in as interim coach when they fired Philbin. And he went five and seven. Uh, now, look, you know, he's an interim coach. He goes five and seven. Even Adam Gase can win five games. Mm. Right. Um, mm. Sometimes he can win five games. Sometimes he can't. Uh, sorry, I couldn't help myself. But all right. So then he goes to the New Orleans Saints and he spends a couple years under 
as assistant head coach with Sean Payton and the tight ends coach. And look, that's worth its weight in gold. I, so, so there it is. There is the Sean Payton connection. I, I love Sean Payton. I, I mean, I, I think there are a lot of people that knows what this guy's worth. I think there's a lot of people. He's underrated, undervalued with a lot of people. I think history's going to show he's one of the best coaches ever coached this game. Um, but Campbell was was a tight ends coach who somehow got elevated to interim head coach when Philbin got fired. And then he defaulted back down to an assistant head coach. That's a little hinky for me. But uh, I, Sean Payton knows a little bit more about this game than I do, just a little bit. We compared it one day, and it was just a little bit more. Um, so take this in context, right? I mean, I, I, I don't see it, but Sean Payton saw something. But in the end, I got to go. This is another questionable Detroit Lions move that ends in complete disaster and another coaching search in a couple of years. That's my take. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you. Uh, I think I don't know a whole lot about Dan Campbell. From what I have heard, he is a very tough, like you said, energetic kind of person, which I think that'll be good for the Detroit Lions. It'll make them somewhat fun to watch as bad as it is to watch and as hard as it is to watch them generally. Uh, the move that they have made since he has became the head coach and this offseason – has been pretty good for them as an organization. So I would give them a couple of years, uh, and then they'll begin to start getting a little bit better. They're the Lions. I don't think they are going to ever make that step, really, uh, to being an elite competitor in the league. Uh, but give them a few years. I think they're going to make progress. They'll get better. Uh, they did pick up Jared Goff. They got rid of Matt Stafford. That's obviously, in my opinion, a downgrade, but the package they got for him was definitely a win for the Lions. Uh, DeAndre Swift is coming back. He's a very versatile running back. Uh, I think he has more than enough potential to be very good. But again, he's playing for the Lions. Uh, you also have TJ Hawkinson, who has he's a tight end. He's proven he could play with the big boys. I think he'll do well. And then they definitely they hit the lottery in the draft, being able to pick up Penn Ace Wool, the offensive tackle out of Oregon. Uh, he slid down the board. I had him, I think, going five. I think, Hefe, you had him going five as well, too, to the Bengals, right? Yep. Yeah, so uh, they definitely got a win there by picking him up. That'll give Goff a little bit of protection. Uh, and then they kind of focus on their defense throughout the rest of the draft. They ended up picking up a running back and a receiver in the late rounds. Uh, but every other pick on there was for their defense. So they're trying to tighten that up, make the right moves. Unfortunately, this is not going to be the year for the Lions. Uh, I did a mock season predictor thing and i think i only had them winning like two games this year so it's not going to be pretty but hey lions fans are used to it yeah and i don't feel a whole lot different than you you know i think there's there's some promise with this team but you know the inability to bring in a marquee wide receiver after losing kenny galde and marvin jones jr um is, is going to be to their detriment you know they got tyrell williams he has issues staying healthy he's supposed to be their number one receiver then they brought in Rashad Perriman, who's had flashes in his career, obviously, uh, with Jameis Winston throwing a bunch of yards a couple years ago. Rashad Perriman had like a good seven-game stretch or something like that. Um, you know, there's just not a lot of depth there. This should be the year where if we see if T.J. Hawkinson can take that step to be a star like George Kittle. You know, the, those two uh, train a lot during the off seasons. Those two know each other real well. Um, it'll be interesting to see without any big name receivers there and and with the new quarterback in town and Jared Goff rather than the gunslinger and Matt Stafford. It'll be interesting to see how TJ Hawkinson does. Uh, really, I mean, I don't have much faith in their defense, just like last year. Just not a whole lot of faith in their defense. So the only move over the offseason that I was like, yeah, that, that was probably a good move was bringing Jamal Williams in um, to be the backup to DeAndre Swift. Um, he'll probably have the same kind of role that he had in Green Bay where he just comes in, changes the pace. He can catch out of the backfield. He can be a lead running back if you need him to on any certain day. But I think that offensive line, you know, obviously drafting Pinay Sewell, you know, they're, they're focusing on continuing to make that offensive line good. And, and as a Colts fan, I, you know, we've seen if you just put a good offensive line in front of pretty much any quarterback and running back, somebody – will be able to make something happen. Um, you know, I think the offense has potential uh, to score a decent amount of points. It'll be interesting. I think, you know, Anthony Lynn coming in as the offensive coordinator, um, you know, obviously used to be the head coach for the Chargers. 
It'll be in- interesting to see what his offense looks like. Overall, I have them going uh, one and sixteen this year. You know, like I said, there there's promise for them to do well in the future. They have a couple pieces that I think they could really build around, um, but there's still a lot of construction that has to be done. I think we're all in agreement that the Lions are at the bottom. Yeah, that's about where they've been since I've been alive. <laughs> it's about where they've been since I've been alive. <laughs> I think they made the playoffs <laughs> 1984 or something. Anyway, all right. So who do you want? Who do we want to talk about next? Honestly, it doesn't matter to me because I have both of these teams neck and neck fighting it out for a playoff spot. All right, let's go. Let's talk about the Bears. Okay. All right. So Matt Nagy's the head coach. Uh, they were eight and eight again. You know, I was looking over my notes uh, from last year's preseason AFC North preseason show that we did. Eight and eight on the hot seat. Here's being over his head. Quarterback controversy may get fired. Um, it, it's freaking deja vu all over again. Uh, and what what saved him? An improbable, lucky ass five and zero start. They went they went three and eight afterwards. And hands down, in my opinion, the worst team in the playoffs last year. I mean, they just it was what a disaster. So what do they do? They kept their offensive coordinator. Let me run. Let me run down him. His, his, what he's known for. He's fired by the Dolphins after a year. Fired by the Bengals after a year. Um, you know, in 2000, like I said last year, in 2019, he was the 23rd. They, the Bears were the 23rd ranked offense under him, uh, or they were 23rd ranked offense. Were they going to get worse? Yes, they were ranked 26th last year. Um, so, I'm. You know, in a second, I'm going to let you guys talk about all the offensive weapons and everything's going on. And, and I'm just going to go. <laughs> uh, but on the defensive side, Pagano's gone. Uh, beloved Chuck pagano has gone, but they brought in, uh, well, not, they didn't bring in, they raised up Sean Desai and he was Fangio's right-hand man. And Fangio gives him a lot of credit for helping him design his defense. And, you know, the, this is what everybody's standing on. Um, but, you know, Patricia was Belichick's right-hand man and Caldwell was Dungy's right-hand man. So I don't know how much stock that is. He's going to have to, he's going to have to put up, but I like, I like Fangio and um, Desai has been with the bears since 2013. The players like him, the defense was good last year. Um, This could be good. And, and I, I hope he succeeds. And for bears fans, in my opinion, they're going to need, they're going to need this guy to succeed if they want to have, if they want to be, have any type of relevancy in October. Yeah, so let's address the elephant in the room. Andy Dalton, Justin Fields, I know we had talked about this a few weeks ago when we when we did a little podcast. Uh, but from my understanding, even though Justin Fields was looking pretty good in minicamp, they are going to start with Andy Dalton. Now, last year As I was they high. should. As they I- should. Yeah, last year, last year I was high on Andy Dalton uh, stepping in for the playing with the Cowboys. Unfortunately, the Cowboys defense was just horrendous, so they weren't able to do anything with Dalton under center there. I think Andy Dalton's a very formidable quarterback. I think he can do well. Unfortunately, looking at the schedule and going through the little mock prediction thing I did, uh, I have the Bears starting out two and five with Andy Dalton under center. I think after. Week seven, when they lose to the Buccaneers, I think they're going to make the switch to Justin Fields. They pretty much have a weak schedule in that middle section, so I think they're going to rattle off some wins. Ultimately, I have them making the playoffs uh, as a number seven seed at 10-7. and seven. Uh, They do have some pretty good weapons on offense. Obviously, I like Justin Fields. I think they hit a home run in the draft when they were able to snag him up in, in the late to middle, early first round. That didn't make no sense. With the eleventh pick in the draft, uh, they also took Tevin Jenkins, an offensive tackle, sure up that line. In the fifth round, they took another tackle, a running back in the sixth round, a receiver in the sixth round, and then they kind of got some defensive pieces. They still have Khalil Mack on the defensive end or the defensive side, so I think the defense is going to be good. You also have Allen Robinson, David Montgomery, Tarek Cohen, Damian Williams, Darnell Mooney, Anthony Miller. Uh, and then you have the old Jimmy Graham, who's on his last leg, w- walking with a cane, and uh, Cole Komet on the offensive side. So, 
I know I read off a lot of names. I think midseason, the Bears are going to turn it up. Everybody's going to gel. Justin Fields is going to lead them. They're going to be a playoff team. And if Aaron Rodgers is not in Green Bay, I think the Bears will win the division. Yeah, that's how I feel too. You know, this whole division I have with sort of weak records because their, their schedule, I mean, uh, they, they all play pretty much all playoff caliber teams other than their own division. Uh, so, so they're going to have a tough schedule, you know, everybody in the division. But the Bears, you know, like Zach said, you know, I, I'm also somebody who, who thinks Andy Dalton can get the job done. Um, but but we're going to have to see what the offensive line looks like around him. Um, you know, they have a lot of young guys there. Um, you know, obviously, Zach mentioned that Tevin Jenkins was a draft pick from this year. Um, Cody Whitehair is, is a center. He's going to be their, their veteran presence on the offensive line and, and get these young guys to, to gel together quickly. Now, I think Andy Dalton can play well enough to be able to keep the job for the whole season and, and just finish the season for them. And then they let Justin Fields come in next year with a different team. I think they're, they want to retool the offense and get more pieces around them. Now, now Allen Robinson, got to give him a lot of credit because he's done a lot of losing with the Jaguars and a lot of losing with the Bears and decided to sign a, a long-term contract with the Bears in the offseason. Don't know why he would do that um, to, to stay there in Chicago, but – but he decided to do that and props to him. You know, uh, the defense for the Bears is, you know, Chuck Pagano being gone, I think, is, is going to be a pretty big factor. And I think Jalen Johnson had a fine rookie year, and that's why they were comfortable with get, giving the Broncos Kyle Fuller for next to nothing and, and riding with him as their lead, their lead guy at cornerback. But Desmond Trufant, has had a rough last, what, three years now it's been for him. It's just been a slide downhill every year. Um, he was supposed to be the guy with the Lions last year, and it completely fell apart for him. Um, so the defense, you know, that they've, they've had some guys leave. It'll be interesting to see if they can keep that high play up without Pagano there and a couple extra pieces. Um, overall, I have them going 7-10, and 10, but because I don't expect Aaron Rodgers to play this year, I think they're going to win their division. Seven and ten with a division? Yep. Man, that's like the NFC East last year. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, well, I thought that was like four twelve or something. I, I think I think the I think the Dalton Fields thing with considering the Bears past, I, I I don't I don't have a good feeling about this. They 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 mishandled this whole thing with the quarterbacks. Um you got in my opinion, you got a problem with that appears to be coming from the offensive coordinator and, and maybe even the head coach. I mean, a quarterback controversy only wins you five games and then you, then you go into a tailspin. And we, I, we talked about that at the beginning of the season last year. I, I said, that, I, I said, this is not going to fare well. This will ultimately come to a head and become a disaster. You split the locker and you cause problems. Um, and what they do, they went out and got another quarterback with Andy Dalton, and then they can't, and then they turn around and they draft another quarterback. I mean, they, in my opinion, they just keep compiling this problem. Now it could settle. Everybody, including Andy Dalton, knows that Andy Dalton's not there forever. We're lucky. He, I mean, probably a, a one and done. All right. Um, this goes back to Fitzpatrick and Tua. The Dolphins put Tua in too early. They stay with Fitzpatrick. They make the playoffs last year. Then let Tua come out and take his team. Let him run a couple play. Let him let him go through a couple playoff games. Let him see what it's like to win. Start to build that foundation. Get the whole team around the winning and the camaraderie. Fitzpatrick knows that he's stepping out at the end of the year. Let him do his thing, and he completely destroyed. I hope he didn't destroy it. Destroy it. I mean, he he they. And we're going to talk about Miami later. I I I'm worried about this happening here. I don't. If the problem is the offensive coordinator, then then you, having your rookie behind the center is a disaster. Not only will it destroy the season, but it might destroy his career. Um, that, that's a huge concern. Having a veteran behind under center telling the rookie how screwed up the offensive coordinator is and correcting him with what he knows is a big difference. So I, I don't have a good feeling about this. I, I, the, the wild, but the wild card here is, one, you got the Lions. They're at the bottom, right? So the Bears are already stepping on the Lions. 
Um, we're getting ready to talk about the Vikings, and we don't even know if Rodgers going to play. So I can't, I can't argue with you guys about where they're going to end up because the Bears could very well, if the offense is decent and the and the defense is strong, they could very well win this division. I can't take that away, but I, this quarterback thing just has me has me unsettled. So. Yeah, the the biggest the biggest thing with me, uh, I I mean, if it were me, I would stick with Dalton all year long. That way, you put you give Justin Fields a whole entire year to learn underneath him. With I'm no pressure. Yeah, I'm a big believer in that. Unfortunately, Nagy's already on the hot seat, so if things aren't going well, the public pressure that's going to be coming down on Nagy in the front office, they're going to have to make that switch. You just gave a whole big huge package away in the draft to get Fields, so you're going to have to make that switch because you're on the hot seat. You're going to lose your job uh, so that's unfortunately i think that's how it's going to play out yeah well and you may be right and that's where politics gets involved um and it's unfortunate so we'll 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 see so let, let's move on to uh the vikings i don't even want to comment on the Vikings. do you remember what the vikings did to me last year <laughs> i mean i had them winning 11 games you know i like mike zimmer deja vu this is how we started out last year i think i said i like mike zimmer um now, Adam Zimmer is uh, is a defensive coordinator. Did you guys know that? I did not. Yeah. So you know, you know, you know, you know his father's right there, uh, going to be around. Clint Kubiak is now the offensive coordinator. Oh, they just got all the juniors on the coaching staff. Uh, you know, his dad's going to be. I don't know what the hell's going on. Somebody needs to file a nepotism lawsuit in Minnesota, apparently. Um, but the kids are running the damn show. What scares me is, is that I like Kubiak, and I said last year with the pieces they put in place, with everybody they had in place under Zimmer, that I liked what was going on. And I said that the Vikings defense was ranked seventh in 2019, and I expected them to improve. They went to 27th. Now it's kids taking over. I'm a little concerned. Not, not that I don't have faith in, in my children. Uh, at all, but uh, these are big boy games, and you got a man that's got 25 years experience just step aside and, and let his son take over after they slid 20 spots. I'm concerned. On the flip side of that, they the Vikings last year were uh, ranked fourth in offense, and that that I mean that's amazing. It's it's awesome. Um, again, the son's here. Dad's going to be hanging around. I just don't know that they can keep that up with a fourth-ranked offense. I honestly – the Vikings could win this division, but I don't have the confidence I had last year. And obviously, uh, they didn't do near anything what I thought last year. So I can't put any – I would put them neck and neck with the Bears, which isn't very high on my priority list right now. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's – I want to like the Vikings. I have that same feeling I had last year during the preseason where I had high hopes for them. Uh, But I think they're going to have just a mediocre 500 year. Well, you can't really have 500 with the way the schedule is now. I have them finishing nine and eight. Uh, As long as Dalvin Cook and Adam Thielen can stay healthy, I do think this offense is going to be very potent. Uh, They were able to get Christian Darisol the offensive tackle out of Virginia Tech in the first round. He slid all the way down to number 23. I was actually hoping the Colts would take him or Quiddy Pay, who he ended up getting. Uh, one of those two guys I was going to be good with. So drafting a first-round offensive tackle to protect Kirk Cousins, hopefully that will allow him a little bit more time to make better decisions. And if they can do that with Cook and Thielen staying healthy, uh, Justin Jefferson is going to be probably one of the top three receivers, if not this year, the next couple of years. Uh, they have, they're have they looking really good on the offensive side. Defensive side is questionable. Uh, I do believe they picked up Patrick Peterson, which is a good pickup there. Uh, but like I said, I have them finishing 9-8. and eight. They're going to be fighting it out with the Bears, trying to secure that uh, wild card spot in the NFC. If Rodgers doesn't play, who knows? They may slide in there. I feel like that's that's a little – optimistic you know I don't think they've done enough with their defense to have faith that they'll be able to have a winning season you know up front you know they were able to re-sign to Neil Hunter and that's a big deal um you know but Eric Kendricks Anthony Barr they're they're getting older and this team should be able to stop the run but in today's NFL you have to be able to stop the pass at some point you're going to play especially this year with their schedule they're going to play a lot of really good quarterbacks 
and the fact that they're relying on Cameron Dantzler and and a very aged Patrick Peterson, who's who's been in slow decline over the last four years or so. Um, you know, it's I don't I don't trust their defense. I think their defense is going to let them give up games. And, and kind of like Zach said, you know, pretty much everybody on the offense has to stay healthy all year because they don't have depth anywhere. They have two really good receivers, but if either one of those guys goes down, then teams are going to be able to double up on one or the other and then and take away whoever else comes in behind that. Uh, you know, this year you would think Irv Smith Jr. at some point uh, they're going to use him and his athleticism. They kind of started to use him toward the end of the year. I think that's some they're going to have to, you know, I would put him more in the slot, use him as more of a third receiver or, or a tight end coming off the edge. you got to mix in the tight end at some point. Um, but but they all got to stay healthy. And then the, the probability of that's not high. You know, I have them going 5-12 and 12 this year. They might steal another win or two. Um, but But I just don't – I don't think – the entire roster is going to be able to stay healthy like that. Yeah, I agree. I think the Vikings and the Bears will both probably be around 500. I think the Vikings are probably a better team, but we'll see. All right. And the, save the big one for last. All right. Uh, the Green Bay Packers and the uh, all of the questions swirling around that camp. Uh, I, want to, I want to talk about Matt LaFleur for a second. I've, I've thought a lot about this, and here's my take. And, um, you know, I <laughs> – we've had a lot of conversations about a lot of coaches, and I'm pretty accurate on a lot of them. There's a couple of them that I've missed. But um, here's my take on the floor. I, it, it's too early to tell, but I, I see some warning signs here with this guy. Um, and I, I know people are like, <clears throat> oh, he's 13-3 thir- and three in his first season, or in his first two seasons, right? But he, he goes 13-3 and three in his first season, and he loses the NFC Championship. Fantastic. Uh, of course, Caldwell won 14 games his first season. We saw where that went with the Colts. He goes 13-3 and three in his second season, loses the NFC Championship. In a game – that you could argue in any pub in the United States that the Packers could have won that game. Uh, and there's a couple, couple mistakes, coaching mistakes made in there. But most importantly, do you know what those two things have in common? Those two 13 and three seasons have in common? And it ain't losing the NFC Championship. It's Aaron Mother Rodgers. Right? It's too early to tell. It's easy, easier to win games when the machine is built and and ready and maintained, which is what Lafleur walked into to a degree. There's there's an argument there, and I understand there's an argument there. But I mean, just ask Barry Switzer or, or Jim Caldwell, right? So everybody thought those guys were geniuses. Well, not everybody. I called Caldwell out on when I was writing for Bleacher Report before the wheels fell off the machine. But I digress. The Lafleur's made a couple of mistakes across the Packers, in particularly controversial call last year that, uh, that we know Rodgers was upset about as well, and as he should have been. Um, and I'd like to point out that their division, even with a 13-3 record, it's hard to win in this league, I will, and I'll give that to him right now. But even with being 13 and three, it's not like they're in the NFC West or the NFC South, right? I, I mean, they have the Bears, the Vikings, and the Lions. All, of, all three of those teams are good at shooting themselves in the foot and just handing the Packers damn near a 500 season by themselves. So, and then, then we got to factor in that last year, Rodgers played out his goddamn mind. That, that was the most one of the most ridiculous things I've ever seen. I mean, he, the guy could not make a mistake. It makes me, it, honestly, it makes me wonder how much, this is what people didn't realize was going on in Indianapolis until much later. Some people still don't realize it. Um, but it makes me wonder how much Rodgers is running the show 
behind the scenes in Green Bay. And maybe that's why he's so upset right now. Maybe he's actually running the show Peyton Manning style. He's calling the shots um, and maybe not to that extent because that was a, that was a little um, uh, exceptional circumstances. But if, if Rogers is running things and Lafleur is playing rank and file on him and not including him in, in key decisions, I, I'd be pissed too, All right? Making, making the guy look good and then he doesn't return the courtesy. I would think about tanking and making him look bad too. I, I I would, and I have I have moments where that's happened in, in my life. So this is where I'm going with this. Rogers is about to show the world why the Packers management has screwed this whole thing up. If he doesn't play, this ship sinks, or or at least becomes obvious that it is sinking. Um, Rogers stays, and the Packers are on top of this division again, and they're a contender for a Super Bowl. And I believe that. Um, if he leaves, this is literally anyone's division. And, you know, may, maybe not. It might be a little bit of exaggeration. The Packers might be good enough to still win this division, even though I know you guys have just pointed out that, um, you know, that you think differently. But uh, but you get the point. I, 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 I think the Packers are making a huge mistake. And I think they're, they may be too far in to, to admit it and fix it the way it needs to be fixed. Yeah, if if I was the Packers front office, I would be doing everything I possibly can to get Aaron Rodgers back on this team. Although you were kind of criticizing the whole last two NFC championships, I get it. I'm a little bit more optimistic looking at it as, hey, we have made the last two NFC championships. Last year, we were one of the best teams in the league, even if our division isn't very good. And I thoroughly believe that if Aaron Rodgers is back on this team and he plays lights out with a chip on his shoulder like he did last year, the Packers are going to be right there again as a Super Bowl contender. Uh, If Aaron Rodgers is there, I have him winning 14 games. They'll be 14-3. and They'll be the number two seed to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, But if, like I said, if you're the front office, you have got to do everything you possibly can to get Aaron Rodgers on this team. Because if he doesn't play, I don't think the team as a whole is going to be good enough to even make the playoffs. With Aaron Rodgers, he's like Peyton Manning. He makes everybody better. If you're a no-name receiver, or I can even say Tom Brady too, because he's, he's done it in his career. If you're a no-name receiver and you have an elite quarterback, they make you look good. So I don't see this team doing anything with anybody other than Aaron Rodgers. So please, somebody, make him show up and play this season because you have the possibility of winning a Super Bowl. Yeah, and and most of this, you know, of course, Aaron's not going to come out and say it. You know, neither side is going to come out and say it. But it's been pretty apparent that, you know, Aaron is, is upset that, you know, he, he would like more control. And he said before publicly that he would, would like to have more control over the plays that get called. Um, he'd like to have more control over the kind of people that they bring in free agency and, and who they're drafting. Um, yeah, why, why, why would you not give that to him? I don't understand. Which was kind of my point that maybe, maybe that's going on anyway. And he's not being recognized for it. That's, that's kind of my, I mean, a guy like that has that kind of influence and he's 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 doing the little things behind the scenes and making all this happen, and they're not giving him the the outwardly the public support or the public role. That that was kind of my point behind. It. Yeah, well, and I, I know a lot of the reason, and, and probably most of the reason, is because they, he doesn't have, um, as I understand, it, any more. It's either he has no more guaranteed money right now, or he's going into his last year with guaranteed money, but he still has two years on his contract after this season. Um, I, it's, it's one of those two situations. I'm pretty sure he has $22 million guaranteed this year and then no more for the rest of his contract. In Green Bay, you know, you can almost see their side of it. Aaron's been hurt a couple times in the past, you know, a couple collarbone injuries, um, you know, uh, obviously a leg injury that, that kept him out for a little while. And, and so I can understand them not wanting to give him money and they want to see him get through another year, but, he just came out and proved that as long as he stays healthy, then he can be the MVP, and he's still going to throw 40 touchdowns and in, in four interceptions or three interceptions, something, some kind of crazy ratio again. And and so it's just he deserves 
to get paid pretty much whatever he wants. If guys like Mahomes, you know, Mahomes is young and, and he's got a whole career ahead of him. So I, maybe not to that level, maybe, you know, 45, 50 million might be a little much for somebody like Aaron, but, but with the way the quarterbacks are getting paid and the way the salary cap is going to be going forward, it, the salary cap raises 25 million starting next year. And, and it's going to keep going up after that. You could easily guarantee Aaron 35 million next year and, and 35 million the year after that. And he'd probably come back right away, come in, and participate in the camps and he'd be your quarterback this year. But for whatever reason, they see, they see Aaron as, as somebody that's aging and somebody that uh, the GM recently came out and, and said to the media that he's a complicated fella. Like when you're going through these situations, you can't say that kind of stuff about the MVP. Like we're not talking about just another quarterback right now. We're talking about the MVP of the NFL, the best quarterback in the world in 2020. I mean, show a little respect, man. I mean, put, put some respect on his name. Yeah, they're just proving his point. Right? Yeah. yeah. He feels disrespected. He feels like the, the management isn't giving the, the respect he's due. And, and they're do, and they're – Proving his point publicly. That's, uh, that's the way I see it. And I'm not a huge Rodgers fan. I mean, from from an athletic standpoint, from a football standpoint, from a quarterback standpoint, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan. From a personal standpoint, not that I know him personally, but um, you know, he seems he seems he, he seems kind of like a dick, you know. But the guy puts up the numbers. Uh, he's winning, and that's exactly what he's paid to do. So if he's doing what he's being paid to do, um, then you owe him some respect. And that's just, I, I think we all agree with that, you know, um, I, I don't, anyway, I, I, I'm worried at this point. I mean, he's a professional, right? I mean, I think, I just don't know what it would take to fix the situation. And I, I don't, I don't see. It. So when you look at it from everything's broken down, I don't see Aaron Rodgers apologize. No, absolutely not. No. So it's going to take management to apologize. And the things that they're saying in the media makes that more difficult every time they open their mouth. Um, this, this, may, this may be the stalemate we think it is, and it may not be. A lot of times everybody plays this game, right? You know, they're, they're trying to get their leverage and push back and forth. This, this may be a stalemate. He may not play this year. This, this may be the real deal. God, I hope not. I mean, I'm, both, both sides need each other. Because if, if Aaron Rodgers leaves, the Packers are no good. But, again, there's really no landing spot for Aaron Rodgers to go. That would be an upgrade from the team he has in Green Bay. So they both need each other. But then again, Aaron Rodgers, pretty wealthy as it is, he could just say, okay, you're not going to do that. Well, screw you. Then I'm going to make you look bad, just like you were talking about. So I hope it doesn't come to that. I hope they can work out an agreement. He can get back there. I have high hopes for the Packers. I definitely think they can contend for a Super Bowl if he's there. I do disagree with you on one thing. I think that the Green Bay Packers or the uh, the Denver Broncos, I think their team all around, completely healthy, that's one of the better teams. They just need a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. You know, I don't think Drew Locke or even Teddy Bridgewater, as much as I like Teddy Bridgewater, even with that team around them, like Denver has, I mean, everything you want on offense. They have the receiver at the tight end. They have everything you want on defense. They just drafted Patrick Sertain to, to fill an open spot. So, so the secondary there, I mean, that that's going to be one of the better defenses. Obviously, Fangio is still the coach. Um, so the defense, and th so I think overall, I would like to see Aaron get traded to Denver to see what happens there. Because um, I think that team can make a run, and it would make the AFC West absolutely crazy to watch all their games. Um, but I, like I said, I don't, I don't think there's anything except for guaranteed money that they can offer Aaron to make him come back as Green Bay's quarterback. I think he's even said he wants to be the next full-time host of Jeopardy, and, and he was very serious about that. He's been talking about all summer on social media and the one or two times he was on the Pat McAfee show and in different media outlets that he's very happy with where his life is. He's been hanging out in Hawaii a lot. He's been going around the country with his girlfriend, who's an actress, and, and going around to different movie shoots and, and all kinds of vacations. He's, he's been very content with 
non-football activity, um, which is something he said just a couple weeks ago um, in an interview with Tom Brady and a couple golfers in, in, you know, in preparation for a golfing event that they're doing soon. Um, he said he's been pretty content with non-football activity. So I don't even think it's so much, you know, can we get Aaron back, you know, this year, maybe he comes back next year. How's that going to work out? I think it's, can you stop him from retiring at this point? Like there's no incentive. He's like Zach said, he's made a bunch of money. He just won another MVP, proved what he needed to prove. You know, it would have been nice for him to win a Super Bowl. But um, if he's content with life and he's he's got more than enough money, then I could easily see him hanging it up if they don't give him guaranteed money. Which is why I think money won't fix it. I, I think that's why I was going to the apology. I think this is this has got this is so personal uh, that he's going to want to win the public opinion. And one of two things are, gonna, in my opinion, I think one of two things are going to happen: either they're going to publicly apologize, or they're going to, or the, or he's going to step out and he's going to let the ship sink and then say, "I told you so." Either way, he wins. Jumping and, dimes and suck it signs. Yeah, and and the problem is, is the Packers have way more to lose than he does with this as Jeff was just talking about. So um, it, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate because you want to see – everybody likes their team to win and this and that, but you want to see – I want to see the best players on each team play, and I want the real winner. That's why I hate injuries, because when teams lose that shouldn't lose because of injuries, it, it, in my opinion, that, that's one of the saddest things in sports. So I want everybody to be there. I want Aaron Rodgers to play. And if they're going to win, then I want them to win. If they, Aaron Rodgers plays and they don't win, then that's fine. But for him to walk away and then other teams to win, I feel like the fans get shortchanged. So hope I, I just I hope they can work it out. But I, I'm afraid this is this has gone on too long. But they better they better fix it quick. Okay. Season's fast approaching. Yep. Yeah, and we've spent a lot of time talking about Aaron Rodgers, and rightfully so, because what happens with the Green Bay Packers relies on what's going on with with Aaron Rodgers. But um, you know, we, we've talked about how much we think there's talent, a lot of talent on the offense. Defense look kind of shaky at times. Um, but with Jordan Love stepping in, um, you know, it's unfair to him kind of what's going on. A lot of people thinking the Packers are just going to absolutely tank um, if Jordan Love takes over, and rightfully so. Um, and I'm, I'm actually one of those people. I have them going 4-13 uh, and 13 if Jordan Love is that quarterback. Um, probably a 12 and five team with Aaron Rodgers, um, but but I just think, you know, the the start of his career has not gone very well for him, and not any of it's been his fault. So it'd be cool if he could step in and, and still be able to score a bunch of points with the likes of, you know, you have Aaron Jones, Devontae Adams, Alan Lazard, um, and and Robert Tanya, and a decent O line. The pieces around him are there, um, so he'll he'll get the opportunity to to prove a lot of people wrong this year if Aaron's not. All right. Well, that does it for the NFC North. Uh, we want to remind you, please be sure to show us some love and uh, like and share and subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, come join us. Let us know. You, uh, we want to hear about your team. We, we want to know what you think. So um, please also help us get the word out by telling all your friends. Help us reach 1,000 YouTube subscribers and you have a chance of winning an authentic NFL jersey from the NFL shop, shop on us. Uh, if you're watching this again, hit the subscribe button, the bell icon. And uh, we also will be setting up the uh, weekly pick and battle soon. Yep. Right. Uh, probably in the next month, we'll start getting people signed up for that. Okay. Go head to head with us. All right. So stay with us. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter page at Horses Sports. And uh, we will have the information available to you when it comes available. We have uh, prizes and, and, once you get on air with us and kind of represent your team and all that kind of stuff. So uh, fantasy football, when are we doing that? Uh, we got a show coming up here in a few weeks. Jeff and I are going to, once it gets closer to draft time, him and I are going to run down some uh, fantasy draft. Okay. All right. Good deal. So, and uh, you know, we've got a special uh, reorganization thing coming out. We're going to roll out a uh, uh, Patreon thing here soon. So uh, just stay with us, subscribe. And, uh, and and check out all of our events, and, and we'll keep you updated. We appreciate your support, and uh, we will see you back here. We, we're covering uh, what's the AF, next? AFC North next AFC week. AFC North next week. So uh, we'll see you then. Deuces.